third Friday talking about what she's talking about today. So let's give a house welcome to our own. Give me a nod. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Worship was awesome. God is so good. Prayer before church was awesome. God is so good. I am. Um, I've changed my thinking in in the whole. I know God is good, but it's not because He gives us good things. He's just good. Yeah. You know. So like. Um, got to back up because I got to see everybody. Um, we, we just got done baling our hay and we had missed a cutting so our hay was twice as tall as it was supposed to be which is awesome because it's twice as much but not so awesome because it takes twice as long to dry. Um, when you bale, when you cut hay, you need four to five, depending on the weather, maybe even seven good dry days. Um, we were pushing on maybe four days that we had. And it wasn't like overwhelmingly hot, like you like to cut hay when it's going to kill you to stand outside. It, yeah, it wasn't really, really hot. But we went on and we cut it anyway because it had to be cut. And... Um, Chuck was out there on the third day. No, yeah, it was the fourth day, and he was tedding it. I don't know why they call it tedding. I thought it was tetting, but I guess it's tedding. I guess Ted came up with the idea. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, it's turning over the hay. It's getting it so it can dry. And I went out there and rode on the tractor with Chuck just for a couple minutes, and he was just he he was, he was crying because it was so dry. It was ready to go in four days. In four days, it was ready to go, and we baled almost, well, it's like 450 bales of hay in a field that usually brings us about 225, 250 bales. So I went to post that on Facebook, and like, God is so good. And I was like, well, that's, yeah, but it's not because of the hay. So instead, I just posted, I'm ever so thankful. Because even if the hay got rained on, it doesn't change the fact that he's good, right? Yeah. He's still good. And so it just messes with my brain because you want to say, God is so good. He gives us good things, and he does, but that doesn't change. All right. All right, well, I'm going to start. I have something that I want to share. Lord's had this on my heart, so I asked Pastor Bob if I could, if I could share this with you. Um, I'm going to start in John, and I've read this scripture to you guys a thousand times, but Lord wanted me to start with this. This is this was Jesus' heart. He said, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their through their message. That's you. That all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them, and you in me. May they be brought in complete unity to let the world know that you have sent me, and have loved them even as you have, and loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am, and to see my glory, the glory that you have given me because you have loved me before the creation of the world. So, it's all about connection, isn't it? It's all about feeling connected. It's all about hearing and feeling and seeing. And I just was, I, I'm one of those people that when I'm in a room, and there can be like a, a lot of really good stuff going on, and I feel that, it's awesome, but what I also feel is what's not going on. I can sense the people in the room that aren't connecting. And it just, it tears at my heart. And I've heard um, Bill Johnson say, I won't be happy until every single one I pray for gets healed. And that's how I feel about connection. I think it's awesome that when we go to worship that there's 70%, maybe 
less, maybe more people in the room that are actually connecting with the Godhead. But I'm not satisfied because my eyes don't see that. My heart pulls towards the one that's sitting there thinking that, that that's great. Maybe next time I'll keep coming. Maybe next time I'll connect. You know, or maybe it's not for me. Maybe that's just not my personality. Maybe that's just not who I am. Maybe that's not how God talks to me. Maybe he doesn't want to hug me or hold me. And that's what has pulled me here today. Okay, so I hope this blesses you. And I, can, and, and I think one of the reasons I feel that so strongly is because for the longest time, that was me. I was in, a, in this body of believers that was connecting and going and moving forward, and I, I, could, I could make the moves, you know, do the stuff, but there's, there was just this longing for connection, and I couldn't seem to make it, you know, for, for reasons, you know, that things that had happened in my life. So that's what I want to talk about. Not talk about me, but talk about connection. <laughs> okay, so all we want is connection. We want to know and we want to feel. We, we're always going after it, either in our work with our friends, our, our potential mates, you know, in our churches. We're, that's, what we, that's what we're always working towards. It's how we're made. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but I actually hated that. I hated that I was made that way. I thought it would be much easier if I was the kind of person that just didn't need to be connected to anybody that I was completely full, complete on my own, that I wouldn't need people, and I wouldn't need God to meet me where I was. That would be a lot easier, a lot less painful, a lot less work. So I, so I actually despised the way I was made. And I would work towards, the fact, work towards not being that way. And um, couldn't get the job done, obviously, because you were created to be connected. And Jesus said, he, he, he was talking about, he said, um, where is it? Is it this one? It would help if I could see. Um, Matthew 18, yeah. He said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like this little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So what is, a child comes into the world with needs you know the child comes into the world needing comfort needing to know who they are needing to be affirmed you know and and it's not considered weak it's considered wise you know you can't have your needs met if you if you don't if you don't go after them if you don't let people know but so we come in he says we have to be like that small child we have to recognize the fact that we are created with needs and not despise it. You were created that way for a purpose. You were created that way to succeed. Not He hasn't set you up to fail. He set you up to succeed. Okay, so if we didn't need him, we wouldn't connect with him. But he's placed these vacancies in our heart for him to come and invade and fill those needs. So that's what we want. That's what we need. Why can't we have it? <laughs> what happens? Well, I think what happens, I know what happened to me. As I grew older, people let me down. God let me down. You know, it seemed like different things happened in my life that created um, scenarios facts that I saw, what we call little truths, that this is the way it is, this is the way people are, they're not to be trusted, you really can't rely on them. So instead of going to God for those needs at that point in my life, I just decided to shut those needs down. So I see my heart as having all these little compartments, you know, that has needs, and then, oh, I don't need to be affirmed and shut that part of my heart down. So now... If you tried to affirm me, it would just kind of go, yeah, I don't need it. I, that part of my heart's not open to affirmation. Or comfort. I don't need comfort. I can do without it. 
I can do without somebody, you know, comforting me and making me feel better. So when somebody would try to comfort me, I, you know, I would graciously, you know, smile and nod, but it would just roll right off of me because I don't really need it. And I don't want to get to the place where I do. So I close that part of my heart off until all of a sudden I'm completely closed off to people, to everyone around me, and nobody can get in. But I'm doing good, right? Because I'm strong and I can get things done. And I'm not always coming to you with how my feelings and, and what I need done and how you upset me and all these things. So, so I'm, I'm good. I'm doing great. But everybody else in the room is connecting with God. And I'm not. So now I've almost become like God. Because he's the only one that exists that doesn't need anything. So if I'm like him, then I can't really, if I'm him, I can't have relationship with him because he's created me to receive from him and to need from him. And instead of that, now I've become like him in the sense where I don't need him. You know, God's the only one that doesn't need He's the only one that was not created that way, to need. He is. He is He is that he is. Does that make sense? Okay. I thought it was funny, the aligning love thing, because this is exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so when we do that, we cut ourselves off, we cease to be blessed. And I'm going to read another scripture. Matthew 5, uh, 1 through 12. Actually, I'm not going to read that whole thing. But the Beatitudes. He says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed for the meek. Blessed that they are meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. I mean, those are all needs. He said, blessed are you when you need to be comforted. Why? Because at that moment, you are able to be whole because he's the one that's able to come meet that need. In a sozo session, I think I'm looking at the room. Everybody should know what a sozo session is. Well, it's a place where we meet with um, a, one person. We'll have two or three people in a room. And it's all about connection. It's, it's not about... You know, you come in because you're you're sick or you're you're you, you're broken or any of those things. Some and people do come because of those things, but it's because most of the people, I'd say 98% of the people that come into our rooms for Sozo, it's because they want to be connected to the Godhead. They were watching everybody else do it, and somebody told them that it, they could also do it too. And this and it's almost like their last stitch effort to come in and to hear His voice. But that wasn't my point. My point is, is that when we do a sozo session, God shows up when the need shows up. I have people come into the room and they, they keep, they've come in because their husband says they should or their wife says they should. And they really don't feel they have any needs. And not much happens. It's the moment that they, they need to be comforted that he comes and he comforts. You know, where grace is needed, it abides. It abounds, I mean, it abounds, it grows. So what? the greater your need, the greater his grace. You know, this, the, 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 more, the greater the sin, the more powerful the blood. It's true. It's true. Okay. So, so we go through life, and it happens to us with before we even know it. 
We've totally disconnected ourselves. And we've, we build a case that says that we don't, we don't connect with God the way everybody else does. And that's okay. But the truth is, is that you don't, you're not connecting because you shut down. You're not connecting because there's a portion of your heart that you said you don't need anymore. But I got news for you, that he's waiting. Not only is he waiting, but I believe that he, the, he's still pouring out on you, but it doesn't get in. It just washes up from the outside because all those doors are closed in our heart. And you, what's happened with me, I still don't have all my doors open, by the way. <laughs> I'm still working. I think, I think we spend our entire lives opening our, the doors to our heart. You know? And when I open one door, it makes me strong enough to open the next. And I just get stronger and stronger. But I can, I can feel him pouring in. Like when I open, open the door to allow myself to be comforted, I can feel him pouring in and filling that spot in my heart to the place where it's so full. Now I can allow people to comfort. I can allow somebody to come and, and meet that need physically here. But I can't do it until I allow him come in and fill that place. So the wholeness comes from him, but to be completed, it comes from each other. We're not to be these complete, I mean, we can these, we're to be whole because of the Godhead and they, he fills all of our needs, but it's so that we can be complete with each other. And that's kingdom. That's what this kingdom culture is all about. But we cannot obtain it without wholeness. I can't connect with you. Well, I, I can try. like Just like you trying to connect with me and I just smile and nod. But you can tell when you hug somebody whether they're letting you in or not. You can tell. And I believe that that comes from Papa being able to come in and make you whole, piece by piece. I don't believe it's a, for me, personally, every time I think I got it all, I run, you know, I get, I open a part of my heart and I'm like, oh, this is so awesome, it feels so good. And I run, and then I realize, wow, there's, there's another part. You know, there's another piece. And then it's not like, oh, there's another piece. It's like, oh, there's another piece. You know, there's another place he gets to come and invade. There's another place he gets to come and invade. So it's, it's exciting to me when those things come to me now. It's not like a big grudgery thing. It's not like I'm afraid. It's more like, oh, I get to be even closer yet. I get to be even more trusting of him. And Jesus, is, he's constantly saying to me, if you would just trust me. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> I'm trying. You know, and <laughs> yeah, do or do not. There's no try. <laughs> okay. But anyway, so it's like it's but he's it's a continual relationship with him, you know, and, and he'll say, You've got it here, but here let me let me help you here. So how do we get from closed heart to start opening our heart? I'm going to just give you some instruction. I'm not going to walk you through it today. Um, but I believe that the first thing that we need to do is to forgive. So, you know, there's whatever, whatever it is that closed off that part of your heart, Whatever the offense was, whether it was, you know, early on, whether it was in a relationship, sometimes it's something will happen now that will trigger that something that happened way back when. And so it's just forgiving. And you, you may have a name, you may not have a name, but it's just forgiving. I forgive the person that hurt me or the situation that wronged me, that closed me, that caused me to close that portion of my heart. I forgive I forgive. And then Holy Spirit, come and hold my hand while I open this door 
and allow you to come in so I can start trusting you again and allow you to come in. But before he can do that, you almost you have to repent too. You have to repent for trying to do his job. You have to repent for trying to be him. All sufficient, all complete, strong by myself. You know, denying him, almost being mad at him for creating me the way he did. I can remember when I was going through all my stuff, with, with stuff, and I actually prayed to God. I said, I can do this. I can get through this if you would just shut down my feelings. If I don't have to feel, you got me. I'll, I'll, I'll rock this thing all the way through. And I, he, I did. I just sh- completely shut down all feelings. And I got through it. And I don't think I was better for it. <laughs> because I've learned that the best thing to do is to be present. When you're feeling those things, it's okay. You're feeling them because you need comfort. The feeling, your body, okay, your physical body, what time is it? Your physical body tells you when you're broken, right? So, you got a broken arm, it tells you your arm's broken so that you don't go pick up something, right? Because that would be bad for you to do. So it tells you that it's broken by giving you pain. And then you go and get it fixed so that you can be better. These emotions that we have are the same way. When you're sad, it's because you need somebody to comfort you. When you, when you're, when you are um, mourning, you need somebody to come in and re- reassure you that there is hope and there is a future. Whether that, and I I first go to God. I go to him and he affirms me, he gives me in my future, but then I take what he gives me after I'm all full and I take it to a good friend and I'm like, look what he told me. And they're like, yes, that's what he, that's true. I'm like, okay, great. Two witnesses, God and you, yay. (laughs) You know, so, but it's, it's not to be denied. It's not to be ignored. It's not to be pushed down. Same with anger. All the emotions, they're very, very important. They're telling you something. And he's put those things in you so that he can connect with you, so that he can fill those needs. He is your protector. He is your provider. He is your identity, your comforter, your teacher, your guide, your friend, your companion. You need every one of those things. You can tell me you don't and you're lying. You've just shut down that portion of your heart. And that's okay, but it's not your fullest potential. And so I just encur- I just wanted to encourage the body today because a lot of what you hear and see here up front, even with the worship, is a lot of people that have gone through all of what I'm just saying. I mean, we've been seven years with the Sozo ministry, with, you know, using the tools, knowing how to, you know, and, and just six months ago, we had somebody come and do Sozo's on the leadership, and we're all like, oh, oh, and we're all broken again. It's like, what? But a little bit closer, a little bit closer. So I just, I feel like it could be really discouraging for somebody that's coming in new to think, how the heck did they get there? But it's piece by piece. It's intimacy upon intimacy upon intimacy. And when you get a little piece of it, you feel like you got it all. But it's just a little piece. But that's okay. Sup all you want. And then you move on. And then it usually gives you a little break. (laughs) <laughs> and then you then it's the next piece but I just feel like I just feel like it could be very um, disillusioning you know like a fairy tale thing for people coming in and not really knowing that it's been a long time getting here folks but it's been a great ride I've enjoyed every minute of it I wouldn't change 
the intimacy part with God one bit. And I'm excited that it's that there's more. That there's you know, there's even close more close times with him. And um, yeah. So as that starts to happen, we'll be able to open our hearts up to people. God actually showed me in the the Sozo that I, that Jesus had the key to my heart and I told him that that was okay and he made a promise not to give it to anybody unless I said it was okay. And he looked up, I looked up and there he was standing with a key and behind him were like this long line of people. <laughs> and they're all just waiting for a key to my heart. And none of them were annoyed or frustrated. They're just happy that they're in my line. You know? And so it was just like, okay, Lord. Okay, Lord. So as, as my question was to him, am, <laughs> my question was to him, <laughs> Yeah, it's 10.30. I'm all done. I'm all done. The question was to him is, will I ever be able to open my heart to people the way I open my heart to you? And he said, yes, you will. And I have been, piece by piece. And so more and more people have the key to my heart now than ever before. So there's hope, people. There's hope for you, and I just wanted to give that to you. Amen. Amen. Good word. Says I knew her when she was self-sufficient. I like you better when you're not. Hallelujah. That, that's a good word. You know, so many times we, we we begin to feel like, well, how come I can't really connect with anybody? It's just because our heart's closed, and um, people can't get through the walls that we build. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to close in communion. Um, what I think we'll do, Bob and Elijah, how about have you guys come up and just, I want you guys to just come um, and, and we're, we're just going to dismiss with communion today. Um, you know, the, with anything that's been said through the service, communion is just one of those, those you know, like awesome moments where you get to come and go, man, Jesus, it's the blood and it's the body. And, and in the blood and in the body, I've been made whole. And um, one of the things I was pondering today on my way in is like, in, in this place where we are,